Welcome to Undercover Magic, the hidden camera show featuring five of the country's very best magicians. Each one has their very own skills and their very own special brand of magic. They've hit streets all over the nation and the cameras have been firmly trained on you. This is Undercover Magic. On tonight's show, Kerry points the finger at some beauticians. This is your big swing. I don't think you'd ever eat fun. This is amazing. You're going to love this. Move this on. is my ninth X pill. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Huh? Who are you going to call? <laughs> and you'll never believe what these dodgy dealers have got in their box. It's a bit like that. Yeah, it's good, though, isn't it? I like that. It's miracle products. For your plants to succeed, use speed seed. The location, a shopping centre in Essex. The victims, green-fingered gardeners too impatient to wait for their plants to grow naturally. Hi, can we interest you in watching a quick demonstration for a new speed seed? It'll revolutionise the way you garden. This week, John and Kerry are selling another miracle product, speed seed. But will these shoppers believe what they see? Are you interested in speeding up that growing process so that you can plant something one night and smoke it the next morning? So would you like to see a quick demonstration of speed seed? Just, just take a couple of minutes. Do you do any gardening? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it right. Just makes your seeds grow quicker. Yeah, yeah. Rather than spending a long time you know, growing any of your plants, you can sort of get them to a good finish as quickly as you can. It's a force growing system, all right? You know how you can grow cress very, very quickly overnight and, and mushrooms grow very, very quickly? Well, you can do exactly the same with any plant now if you use speed seed. I've got here, uh, I can give you a demonstration of how it works. You've just got a bulb. Uh, you can plant anything. It doesn't have to be bulbs. It can be seeds. And all you need to do is make sure it's damp and then you need to put it just in a dark place, cupboard, somewhere like that with a little bit of the product on. That's the powder. Perfectly harmless. You, you don't have to worry about animals, children, anything like that. Then all you need to do is put it into, um, put it into a dark cabinet, something like that, where you know no light's going to get to it. If you use like a cupboard under the stairs, yeah. then uh, make sure you put a towel under the gap at the bottom um, to make sure. And uh, you can see there what's happened now is you can see how that started to come through. Yeah, just in that short time, how how quickly that's grown. Yeah, can you see that? It's only been there like a couple of minutes, you know what I mean? It's grown. We can do it's it. Really, you can really see, once you've stuff. got it to that stage, you can put a little bit more on. Yeah. Put a bit more on. All right. Use a bit more. No, I'll show you once more. The longer you leave it in the dark, like that, the longer the, the longer it is. It's amazing, isn't it? Honestly, this is the real amazing thing. All right. You put it in there again. Just leave it for a similar length of time. Just, you know, time enough for the process to work. In just a few short moments, that thing will grow from just what you saw there was just a little short sprout to now what you've got is this fantastic plant. You know what I mean? It's a miniature daffodil, that, I think. Now, you just imagine you've got bulbs, you've got plants, you've got seeds. You want to bring them on. You get them how you want. You instantly, you've got, you've got your garden made. John's managed to convince them of the benefits of speed seed. But are they impressed enough to buy any? We're selling for five pounds for the for the packet. Yeah. No, no. Can I can I just uh, can I? Are you interested in buying a box? Uh, no. Are you interested in buying a box, sir? We're doing like a special promotion. We're doing five pound for twenty sachets. Oh, and I'll have one. Yeah. yeah. Five years. Five. John can't really take their money. It's time for him to admit that the only thing he's been cultivating is lies. I'm going to give you a warning before, before you go any further. You're not really seriously going to buy this, are you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a box of rubbish you're just about to buy off me for five pounds. Really? Yeah, yeah. Go we on. can't really grow plants that quick. Madam, I don't normally do this. I don't normally do this. You're on undercover magic for Sky One. We film people paying five pounds for a box of nothing. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Yeah, you got me there. Suck it. The location, the sleepy, leafy streets of a well-to-do London suburb. The victims, innocent householders about to receive a lovely surprise. Loki's in costume again to play the part of a delivery man. It's a role he's always wanted to play, and he's really excited about his big package. Today I have a very special delivery for someone, and they are not going to believe what I've got inside my box. They'll like it, but not a lot. 
Ah, the streets of suburban Surrey. It's all people carriers and wife swapping. But today they'll have something new to twitch at from behind their net curtains, as some of their neighbours get a very special delivery. I've got a delivery for you, love. Yeah, you're not expecting anything. Hi, I've got a delivery for you. Hi, I've got a delivery for you, number 71. Lordy. Hi, I've got a delivery for you. Yeah, it's a hell of a job getting it through the gap there. I tried to come through the gate, but uh, I couldn't get it through. Are you expecting anything? Hang on, I can't hear you, the plane, hang on. Definitely 71, it says on my sheet. Well, what have you got? I don't know, mate, I'll just get them off the van. Who are you, then? I'm just chippy. Oh. You haven't ordered anything? Oh, it was a bit of a mystery, actually. I was, I was hoping that... Well, that's what I was hoping you would tell me, because, to be honest, it's a massive box, but it don't weigh nothing. Look. But look at it, there's nothing in it. Look at the size of the box. It's very light. What the heck is it? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's all boxes nowadays, isn't it? And packing materials. I mean, look at it. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's probably just a computer chip or something. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Are you expecting anything? No. Well, I can't get you something yeah. on, anyway. Well, actually, it's me, and I'm the lovely Debbie McGee. Oh, well, I'm the lovely Debbie McGee. Hello. Well, I'm the lovely Debbie McGee, and I've come here with my magic duster to dust your house and anything else you wish. What is going on? Well, hello. Oh. You are Debbie McGee. I am. Hello. Who are you? Yeah, apparently, love, it says that... What are you doing in there? McGee, this has got to stop. You don't do this anymore. Oh. You, don't, you don't get a lot of that. Oh, uh, no. No, not in Ted and Tom. Well, would you get a lot of it around where you live? I don't get any of it, love. No, I don't get any... <laughs> um, sorry, I've just checked the sheet. This isn't actually for you. <laughs> That's fine. It's actually 74. The location, a beauty school in Kent. The victims, gullible beauty students eager to learn new techniques in cosmetic surgery. Today, our magician Kerry is a cosmetic surgery expert with a new line in pain-free procedures. She's come to this beauty school to show the students the benefits of her cutting-edge techniques. Today at the beauty school, I'm doing cosmetic surgery. Ow! This is Dawn and Alicia, and this is Katie and Shelley. And they've come to meet Kerry, who's going to show them something very, very exciting. What I want to show you is very, very exciting. It's an anaesthetic that was actually first developed by NASA. What we've done at Jungle Products is we've taken it a bit of a step further, and we've actually adapted this anaesthetic for the beauty industry. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, cosmetic surgery is big business. But if I said to you that you could offer rhinoplasty, yeah, a nose, a nose job, yeah, to somebody that would take minutes rather than hours with no use of general anaesthetic, what would you think? That's good. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty amazing. So, Kerry's explained that her new anaesthetic allows people to be awake during major surgery, which then heals exceptionally quickly. And to prove her wild claims, she's going to use this young girl as a guinea pig. I've actually injected Annie earlier on with the anaesthetic. So I wanted to make sure, rather than inject her now, and then we all have to sit here and wait. So I've already injected her, but I just need to check to make sure that you're OK. All right. You all right? Yeah. OK. Is that all right? Yeah, I can't feel anything. You sure? Yeah. Mm, OK. All right, I think... It's all right, she can't feel anything. The anaesthetic has worked. The guinea pig felt no pain. Now it's time for the real test to start. Kerry is going to remove the finger with a pair of scissors. <laughs> She's going to cut her finger off, don't. Okay. 
So, that's the finger off. Next up, replacing the lost digit with a plastic substitute. You can then take out the new prosthetic and put that in place. And this actually helps the skin to bond. Okay, and how does that feel? It's still quite nice. Yeah? Yeah. Can you, can you bend it for me? Does that feel what, right? Can we touch it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've it now. If you could offer this into your salon. I think, I think some people would go for it and not, not everyone, because if you're a bit squeamish, I don't think you'd have it done. Would you like to have a try? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. That is mad. Oh, I don't know what to say, but I would definitely try it if I had a salon. Yeah. I would try it. The only downside with it is that you wouldn't be able to learn this at a beauty school or a medical school. It would actually have to be a magic school. Because I'm a magician. This is a <laughs> hidden camera show and you're guests on it right now. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to look. It's so shameful. <laughs> uh, we've been out. <laughs> <laughs> The Location, a comic book and sci-fi convention in East London. The Victims, geeks, freaks and a movie star who all dream of having superpowers. We've come to this comic book and science fiction convention to set up our very own stall. Loki and Max are selling X-Pills, special tablets that have very special effects. Well, we're going to be giving them these pills, which they believe will give them extra uh, superhuman powers, where in fact, in reality, what it will do is actually just freshen their breath. Many of these people are just wasting their weekend looking at old comics and wishing they could see Buffy's pants. Other people used to be a bit famous, like Ernie Hudson of the Ghostbusters. It's time for Loki and Max to bring some excitement and a little bit of hope into all their lives. Hi, sir. Would you like to unleash your mutant latent ability? No. This guy was in Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. X-Pills, OK? Max here can take one of these pills and it will give him the power to levitate objects, like telekinetically. Are you familiar with telekinesis? OK. Can you do it? Not yet. Not yet, OK. Max? Oh, not again. Come on, just take it. This right. is my ninth X-Pill. I can't... Watch this. The comic collectors and the one-time actor aren't quite convinced by the power of the X-Pills. It's time for Max to give them a demonstration. Yeah, to build up a resistance and immunity toward these damn things? Yeah, I don't tell him that. He won't buy any. <laughs> he's kidding, he's kidding. It's... They're not addictive. Much better. Yeah? You feel it? Much better. That's it. There it goes. There you go. The power of levitation. See if you can do it. He needs to take a pill first. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're safe and non toxic, so. Okay. Do you feel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling You feeling it from the, from the tablet? From the pill? Believe for it to levitate. Take a pill and try it. Wait a minute. It's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. Like that? All the way around? I tell you what. Seeing you as. Know, yeah, have, a go, have, a go, have a go. Have a go. Try that one. What, is it, what does it taste like? Mint. The bloke that was in Ghostbusters once is so convinced by the power of the X-Pills that he wants to take them back to Hollywood with him. So it's time for Loki to explain that he's been spinning him a yarn. No, they don't work. They're mints. They're just mints. No, no, no. They're, they're mints. No, they don't work. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Look. They're just mints. They're not going to do it. No. They don't work. But what about... No, no. 
It won't work. It's a trick. You made it look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Using magic. Come here, come here, come here. Who are you going to call? Huh? Who are you going to call? Coming up on Undercover Magic. Julie has given the box a damn good banging and has verified that it is indeed a solid wooden trunk. <laughs> Loki makes some young men very happy. <laughs> and another new show, Honest John's Boots and All. I'll do the whole five, 20 quid. Probably get a tenner for it. <laughs> You're having a laugh, are you? Join us after the break. Still to come on Undercover Magic. King. Oh, people used to say I look like him when I was young. <gasps> oh my god! See, it's just like me, innit? Let's <laughs> show you a miracle jewellery cleaner. Yeah. Clean your dirty rings. They look like they're linked <laughs> together. <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> Bit again, down there. And you'll never believe what these dodgy dealers have got in their box. Look like that. Yeah, that's good, that, isn't it? I like that. The location, a large shopping mall in Essex. The victims, busy shoppers looking for a free show. Today, we've hidden our cameras at the Lakeside Shopping Complex, but none of these shoppers know that this performance is being filmed and that the great Lakini is actually simply Loki. I'm at Lakeside Shopping Centre and today, I actually get to be a magician. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lakeside Shopping Centre! Loki is posing as a common or garden street magician, and it may prove to be a bit of a stretch. In the flesh, madam. Ladies and gentlemen, for your amusement and entertainment, I have here behind my curtain, the Trunk of Destiny! The great Lakini's assistant, Casey, randomly selects a member of the audience to verify the magic. Your name is? Julie. Julie, ladies and gentlemen, this is Julie. <laughs> Julie, I want you to check this trunk on behalf of the audience and verify that it is a solid wooden trunk. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Julie has given the box a damn good banging and has verified that it is indeed a solid wooden trunk. Check these locks, make sure that they are indeed real heavy duty padlocks. We also have a set of regulation hands. Handcuffs. Julie, I want you to check these handcuffs, make sure that they are indeed very strong. Yep. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I shall remove my cape. I shall remove my hat. I shall remove my gloves. And now, with the help of the wonderful Casey, I shall step into the trunk of destiny. <laughs> And now, Casey will manacle my hands together. I am handcuffed. And now, Casey will lock me in the trunk of destiny. I thank you. OK, ladies and gentlemen, the great Lokini is locked safely in the trunk. Padlock number one and padlock Number two. As Loki disappears into the box and behind the curtain, his faithful assistant takes over. Look after my hat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be amazed. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, it didn't take a mind reader to work out who was going to appear from behind the curtain. But does the great Lakini have one last surprise for us? Padlock number one. Padlock number two. And it's not me in the trunk, ladies and gentlemen, but it is the wonderful, the beautiful, the lovely. Ah! Hello, Mum. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Who's that? It's my daughter. <laughs> What's she doing here? I'm supposed to be meeting her. This is her daughter. <laughs> Hello. 
The location, a pawn shop in the southeast. The victims, eager beaver sales staff who are about to get all shook up. We're back in the pawn shop and our magician John is about to put some confused sales staff completely in the picture. Today I'm going to be an international megastar. I'm not going to give you any clues, but what about, look, what's this? Today John is playing the part of a customer in a pawn shop and the shopkeepers Natalie and Wayne are about to experience wow, his yeah. uncanny resemblance to someone who they might just know. The king. Big Elvis fan. Are you Elvis fan? He's got some good songs on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great stuff. My nan loves him. Hey, not an Elvis fan, you're staring. Uh, my nanny friends are that. Hunger, hunger, burning love. Elvis, I bet, not me. <laughs> he was great. A lot of people thought I looked like him. Really? You not see it? He used to be in the Elvis Presley fan club. I joined in 1976, yeah. and then he died in 1977. I was like, I was gutted. Yeah. And he had to pay two years subs. All right. So I lost like a year's, well, I didn't lose it. I was still a fan club, but I mean, pointless to get in the magazine when you know he's dead, isn't it, really? You know. Come here, come here, come on. Be honest, right? Now look at me. Now look at the picture. Now look at me. Look at the picture. Come on, Dad. No, no, look, 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 right. Now look at me. Right. Now look at the picture. Oh, my God. See, it's just yeah. like me, isn't it? <laughs> He's got the cheekbones and everything. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> I mean, be honest. <laughs> I could be Elvis when you look at that, could I? What do you think? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 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 Look at that. Oh, look at me. <laughs> Isn't it? It's like... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Do you watch telly? Yeah. yeah? Have you ever seen uh, Undercover Magic, Sky One? You're being serious? Yeah. No, you're being lying. I'm not lying. Oh, you're on it now. No, yeah. Why is that watching me? <laughs> Why do you think it's watching you? <laughs> Is it because I got my first job, is it? <laughs> oh my god, are you serious? Are you serious? I'm serious. serious. Oh my god. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious, I don't carry around one of these for a living. Seriously? This is, this is the setup? Yeah. I don't believe it. I mean, how much proof do you need? We've got cameras. Miracle Products! Clean jewellery with Miracle Jewellery Cleaner! The location, a shopping mall on the east coast. The victims, Essex girls who lack a bit of polish. Once again on our Miracle Product stand, Mark is trying to sell a phenomenal product to innocent members of the public. Let's show you our Miracle Jewellery Cleaner. <laughs> Mark claims that this product can clean the filthiest of metals. You will be amazed at the results of this. In fact, um, I'll give you a little free demonstration, maybe on some rings. If um, you've got any rings that you're happy for me to... Oh, you've got loads. Well, pick a, pick a ring and maybe you like to have... Oh, a ring. Have you got any boyfriends rings on, or what? Maybe yeah, you come clean in. our rings. <laughs> OK. <laughs> clean your dirty rings, OK? These girls are very keen on Mark cleaning their jewellery and happily donate their rings for part of the demonstration. Borrow a ring from you. Um, a ring from you. Well, you don't have to worry about the diamonds either. It will clean the diamond as well at the same time. If it and melts, we gold. Plastic, you know? Yeah, gold. It's not plastic, OK? So three rings, sir, three rings. We'll, I'll show you how it works, all right? What I'm going to do is slot them onto the end of this pen. Just pop them on here. We'll show you how it works. Just put them on the end. And we First of all, Mark rings. gathers the rings on his pen and it's sprays them right. liberally it's with a miracle cleaner. Cleaning do, do come in. And what it does is it melts the surface of the rings. And then when it reconstitutes, it's like a brand new surface and it looks really clean. You know, if you have a look at it, I mean. <laughs> oh, check that out. Yeah. They look like they're linked together together. They're linking with a ring. Do they look. Do they look like they're linked to you? There seems to be a slight problem. Some of the girls seem quite amused, 
but the others seem a bit more worried. Uh, well, very, very funny. Is he done to my room? It, it's completely fine, OK? You're going to be fine, because we also have a secondary spray. What you do is just pop those back on there. We use a little bit of stabilising spray, a little bit on there, and you find that actually they should come back. There you go, is that all fine? Yeah. OK. <laughs> that was yours, yes? OK, so there you go, and that's back to you as well. Miracle cleaning, you see. That is just my <laughs> the location, a conference room in Kent. The victims, absent-minded sales staff who've been put on a memory development course by their bosses. Today I'm playing once again Lawrence Smith, the motivational guru. I've got to get the people that we're bringing in today to be able to remember a group of random objects and they're going to do that going through a ridiculous story. Of course, I'm going to be cheating, as usual, and doing it by magic. This is Dr Lawrence Smith, a memory development guru. Well, at least these three guys think he is. He's really our magician, Loki, who's about to do his latest mind-warping trick on these three salesmen. Yeah. OK, sorry, I know your time is precious. That's OK. Um, as soon as I can. Loki is unexpectedly called out of the room by his assistant. There seems to be a lot of hilarity amongst the three salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you positive about today? Are you an open mind? Need to be very relaxed. Loki calms the group down and prepares for the memory test. Who would you say has the best memory? I think we should go for Nick. OK, Nick. I'm going to really quickly now... The lads volunteer Nick as the one who can remember things best. Loki's assistant provides a box of various items and the group randomly selects them at will and places them in the middle of the table. It's not important. I'm going to invent the story now using all of these objects. And these create memory hooks. OK, so the story begins. You go home. It's your house. It's pouring with rain outside. So you rush inside. You're soaking wet. To dry yourself off, you get the turkey baster and you start sucking all the water off of you. Loki starts his elaborate, nonsensical story that links all the items on the table together. And the group looks somewhat perplexed. You drink down this coffee and it scalds your lips. It's burning. Ow! So you rush upstairs to the bathroom, you get the first aid kit. It's pitch black in there. You get your wallet out to go and buy a new light bulb. And you make your way back down from the bathroom and you go out. That's the story. OK, close your eyes. Uh -huh. I'm going to remove one of the objects. I want you to go through the story again. When you go through the story, you'll come to a gap because there'll be something missing. So again, open eyes and go. Mm, you're getting wet from the, from the umbrella. You're sucking yourself off with the turkey thing. You've burnt yourself on the coffee, so needed a first aid kit. Uh, light bulb, needed to buy a new light bulb because it had blown, so the wallet's gone. That's where the gap occurred, didn't it? Sure. The wallet. I'm going to try and do the same, OK? I'm not going to concentrate on them anymore. So, Victoria, if you could blindfold me, if you'd just like to cover. OK. OK, Nick, if you want to reach in and remove an object. OK, have you done that? Yeah, I can you. hear a lot of moving around, OK? okay You've got an object? Yep. Is it James? Dave. Dave. <laughs> Great memory you've got, mate. <laughs> Jesus. OK, Dave. Well impressed. Just take an object, hold it up so everybody can see it, move around, and finally we have... Andy. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Andy, just hold it up so everyone can see. Yep, we got it. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm going to take this off. OK, thank you. OK, so the objects that are missing are... which I had to pay for using money, so there's a coin missing, and then realising I'd spent all my money, I hanged myself as a piece of rope. So the, the objects are scissors, coin and rope. Now, am I right in the objects that are missing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm now going to go one stage <sighs> further and I'm going to try and determine which one of you took which objects based on your characters and personalities that I think. So, 
one of you is quite materialistic. If you're not the leader, then you'll make sure that you'll step on whoever's in the way to make sure that you become a leader. That person would be you, which means you've got the coin. Am I right? Yeah. Show me. One of you is less assertive. You feel bound, <laughs> which is the rope. The other one is a lot sharper, a little sly. <laughs> You have the scissors, you have the rope. Oh, rock and roll. When I took this, I thought to myself, I'm going to take this because this is the smallest thing and it was hiding behind the candle, but does that... Subconsciously... But subconsciously, picking yeah, I'm picking it up because... Yeah. It's materialistic. For sure, yeah. I mean, you were all drawn to a particular object through, well, whatever... Re well, for the reasons I stated, actually. That's impressive, yeah. You think that's something that, if you practised, you could do? Yeah, definitely. Do you think that you would know which object I was likely to take? No, I don't think you No, I'm not a clue. Well, I'm quite because of the significance of we don't know what the significance of each thing is. You no. knew that a rope meant this or a well, coin meant that. Clever, but clever, but, yeah. If I was to tell you that I made all that up and that this memory technique that I've just taught you doesn't exist, I made that up as well. I'm not a motivational speaker, guru. My name isn't even Lawrence Smith. In fact, everything that you've seen today has been a magic trick. It's magic. Because I'm a magician. My name is Loki. And I'm making a hidden camera show called Undercover Magic for Sky One. Don't believe you. I mean, that's not even... That's, that's an actress. Awesome actress. <laughs> and here's our camera crew. Next on Undercover Magic, gender confusion with Rebecca Lose. Is he Debbie McGee? <laughs> and another new show, Honest John's Boots and All. I'll do the whole fine, 20 quid. You'll probably get a tenner for it. <laughs> You're having a laugh, are you? Join us after the break. Still to come on Undercover Magic. Oh, Mummy, I'll be here soon. You're driving me mad. Our ventriloquist Paul draws a few funny stares. You did it again. Don't and you'll know. never believe what these dodgy dealers have got in their box. Hey, look like that. Yeah, that's good, that, isn't it? I like that. The location a posh restaurant in Cambridge. The victims cheapskate diners eager to get stuck into some free booze. We set this restaurant as a trap for a sophisticated lunch crowd. Your waiter today is our magician Mark, and he's got a lot of bottle. The problem with being a magician in this situation is sometimes they miss the trick. They've got to be watching at exactly the right time. This is Paul, and this is Martin. And they've come to this restaurant because they think they're going to get a free lunch. What they don't know is that eventually they're going to get some very quick service. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you today? First of all, is there anything that um, I can get you from the menu? Any drinks, for example? Yes, I think we'd like a beer. Any particular type of beer? I don't mind. A light low gas beer. Okay. I'll have a beer that's a beer. A beer that's a beer. A beer that's a beer. Any any food at all? I think we're going to chicken breast. The chicken breast. Yeah, the beef, the sirloin steak. Your food will be here, and literally. Well, too sweet. OK, I'll be back. <laughs> they obviously think Mark is a bit of a strange waiter, but hopefully he'll win them round when he brings in the booze. <laughs> because you have ordered food, we are offering a free bottle of wine as well. What about sir? Um, well, I drink both. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I do drink wine, but I only ever buy red. You only, well, the, the thing is, the thing is about the white wine is that it is so instantaneous. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I mean, you might even like it. Try it. Just have a, have a little sip. Just see if, you know, just try it. 
bad. It's not bad. You see, well, it's. Would you like the experience of being on television? Uh, why not? Now. This second. In fact, you have been. Okay. <laughs> He, he set you up. <laughs> <laughs>
moment. See that? Yeah, can you just roll that up? Roll this up, yeah. Yeah, and if you just put it back Did in. Did you just take all the pearls off the yeah. string? Yeah, okay. you snip the string, drop them in. Mm -hmm. And if you... Yeah. Can you put that in the glass for me? Yeah. 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 Right, believe me. Look at that. What? <laughs> Is he Debbie McGee? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're certainly Paul Daniels, isn't it? Look at like that. Can I have it back on again? Rebecca has pulled it off. Emma has fallen for it, hook, line, and sinker. It's time to come clean. Um, we have a little confession to make. You see, this isn't celebrity lunchbox. And we taught Rebecca a trick, and you've been a guest on Undercover Magic. That was fantastic. <laughs> I'm very impressed. <laughs> Superb. I've been had. <laughs> the location an antiques fair in Hastings. The victims, bricker brackers desperate to get a good deal for their worthless junk. This school hall is the location for a new TV programme called Boots and All, an antique show that we've completely made up. These bargain hunters and antique sellers are here to take part in the show. John is playing an antiques expert who's also the presenter. He's going to talk to members of the audience about items they brought in for valuation. Will you buy it? <laughs> You're having a laugh, are you? Hi, welcome to Boots and All. My name's John Archer and we're here in North London to see what the boots have to offer. What have we got? Come on up. I buy, I sell, I evaluate. That's my job. What have you got for me to look at? A knife. Lovely. What's your name? Keeley. Right. This is actually, it's not a real knife. This, this is actually a letter opener. It's, uh, it's Japanese style, but it's uh, just made in England. Not worth a lot of money. How much did you pay for it? Four pound. You probably get for that when you sell it. Four pound. So you're not going to make a big profit. If you're going to do it for a while, you'll probably get a fiver in about six or seven years' time. That's all I can tell you about it, but thanks anyway for bringing it in. Wonderful little item. Thanks. All right. Who's next? Hello. Hi. What have you got? Um, is this clock that Lila got from her grandma? Lila? That's you, is it, Lila? <laughs> right. Turn and smile for the camera, Lila. Show me, yeah. the, Hello. Show me the cuckoo clock. <laughs> right, now, it, it's a bit it's broken, isn't it? Now that... Oh, it's not broken. That actually fits on here like that. Oh, I see. And, are you wanting to sell it? Yeah, if we can right, make some cash. Probably get a tenner for it. Go. Brilliant. Thank Look you after very it. See much. if you can get a tenner. Come back and let us know how you do. Excellent. All right, who else have we got? Next up is our magician, Loki, who's brought in his mysterious old cabinet. Will John be able to unlock its magical past? Right, Never mind, because I, I wanted to do that next, but we'll do this. Where have you got it from? Um, well, this, this, this has been in my barn since I can remember, since I was a little boy. Um, and I used to play in it, and uh, there's a Wendy house. Right. Um, I think it's probably French, to be honest. There's a lot of these things made um, as like stage prop things. They normally used to have a name around the side, around the back. Have you painted it again down there? I, I, I've repainted it, yeah. Yeah. That that'll devalue it. You've changed these as well, haven't you? Yeah, they're, they're new. Yeah, because you re you really want to, you really want to have the original handles on on there, right? You've just drilled through here. Yeah. Right. If you. Uh, have you got the original handles? No. Right. If you put the original handles in it, yeah. then uh, it'd be worth a little bit more than that. What, what, what do you think it's worth? Well, if it's fully working, probably a couple of grand, you know, back to normal. When you say working, what, what does it do? Well, it's an old theatrical prop. It was probably used by... Sort of 1920s, they used to have a lot of vaudeville shows and, and they, the, they'd have magicians on at the end who'd produce a load of, like, dancing girls out of the front of it, so... You oh, know, that, that's what it would have done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what they used to do is they used to snap their fingers, then open the doors, and the girls would come out. Really? Yeah, like that. I think it's working. Um, that's, that's a, that, I never knew. Yeah. So you just snap your fingers, open the doors, and then girls come out? Yeah, snap your fingers, and then open the doors, like that. And then you do that, you see, and the girls come out. Tell you what, I'll uh, buy this box off you if you want. Well, that's that's eight girls. Yeah, yeah, that's eight. If you want more girls, you, you've got to do a different system. If you want more than eight girls, you've got to do two snaps and then go like that. No. Yeah, like this, watch. And you open the doors, right, and you get more girls coming out. Oh, 
That's fantastic. Yeah, it is quite good. I can't like it. But it's definitely. Actually, I've seen this in Las Vegas. All right. The big shows, but they turn the box around. All the way around. All the way around. All right, we'll try that. Ooh. That's to show that there's there's nothing behind. Yeah, I, I understand. Right. And do they still do the finger thing as well? I think so. Yeah. All right then. And that new up the front. Yeah. And more girls come out. Yeah. Right. Look like that. Yeah, it's good, that, isn't it? I like that. You see, I think I've seen it in Las Vegas, but when I saw it in Las Vegas, they used to take the front and the sides and the back off, right, and then produce the girls. So, girls, can you take the front and the back off for me? I'll take the sides and the back, I'll do the front. Lawrence, help me with the front, will you? OK. You've just been guests on Undercover Magic. <laughs>